Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next section in microeconomics, we're now going to talk about elasticity. And more specifically, we're going to start the section off talking about the price elasticity of demand. So elasticity in general, you can look at it. Let me actually write this down. Elasticity, this concept, you could look at it from the consumer's perspective which is what we're going to start off doing in this video because we're looking at the price elasticity of demand. Remember, demand deals with consumers. But you could also look at it from the producer's perspective. And so we're going to be talking about how elasticity relates to supply later on in the section as well. But for now, we're just going to be focusing on the consumer. So price elasticity of demand, what is it? Well. Elasticity in general basically means how sensitive the quantity of a good demanded or supply changes with a price change. So in terms of demand, it's basically how much the quantity demanded changes with a change in price. Okay, another way this could be worded is basically how sensitive consumers are to price changes. of certain products. Okay, so the more sensitive the consumer is, the more elastic that product or good or service. The more sensitive the consumer is to a price change, the more elastic that good or service is gonna be and the less sensitive the less elastic and if something is less elastic sometimes we say it's more inelastic okay so it's kind of like you can uh, visualize a spectrum here you have inelastic the very end of it is called perfectly inelastic, which we'll get to in a different video. For now, I'm just going to say inelastic here, and over here it is elastic. Right. So the more elastic a good or service is, the less inelastic it is. Or the more inelastic a good or service is, the less elastic it is. Okay, so let me show you kind of how this works. Let's say that we have two goods or services, and I'm going to draw a demand curve for both of them. So demand curve, we got the quantity demanded down here. We got the price over here. Let's say that the demand curve for this first good or service looks like this. And then the other good or service Let's say that the demand curve looks like that. Okay, so notice this one is a little bit more steep downward. And this one is a little bit more flat. Now, notice how for both of them, as the price decreases, quantity demanded is going to increase, right? As price decreases, quantity demanded increases. Law of demand for both of them. It's just how much that quantity increase is going to be. So check this out. Notice here, let's say that we're at P0. So at this point, and let's say that we cut the price of this good or service to P1, which would be this point on the curve. So notice at this initial point, the quantity was over here. And then if we cut the price, then the new quantity demanded, there's going to be more of a quantity demanded 
as we know from the law of demand, but it's going to increase by this much here. That's going to be the increase in that quantity demanded. Versus here, for this good or service, let's say that we're over here, let's do the same scale. So we're at P0 here. So the quantity demanded at that price is Q0. And then let's say we cut it to P1, right? Same price change, approximately at least. And so now the quantity demanded is gonna be over here. So notice with that same price change, the quantity demanded, the increase in the quantity demanded was a lot greater. Okay, so what we say is that this good or service here is more sensitive to change in price and we would say it's more elastic. It's less inelastic. More elastic or less inelastic, remember that spectrum. Versus here, notice that the quantity demanded, even though that price went down, that quantity demanded didn't increase as much as it did here. So this good or service here is less sensitive. to change in price. And we're gonna go over in later on in the section talking about actual real world examples of real world goods and services that fit both of these criteria. I'm just kinda trying to give you a overview of how this elasticity works. So this less sensitive to change in price, so this good here is more inelastic. or less elastic. Okay, the reason why I wanna put both of these here is because usually textbooks will say one of them. Okay, and I don't want you getting confused. More inelastic, less elastic means the same thing, or more elastic, less inelastic, same thing. Right, so this good or service is less sensitive to change in prices. Now, a couple of important points that I wanna make a note of. When I'm comparing these two goods and services, and I'm saying that this one is more sensitive to change in price than this one, you have to make sure that these scales of prices are the same. Okay, so if this good or service goes from like, let's say uh, 100 to 80, right, the price goes from 100 to 80, I'm assuming that this price of this good or service, even though it's a different good or service, it's going from 100 to 80 as well. Basically, these two price changes have to be in line if you're comparing that sensitivity and quantity demanded, or the percentages have to be the same. So for example, if I'm going from 100 to 80, notice that the price went down by 20%. So the percentages have to stay uh, relative. So for example, let's say that this was a thousand, it'd be going down to 800. Okay, or, or uh, if this was 500, then it'd be going down to 400. That percentage change has to be the same if you're comparing the sensitivities of both of these. So I'm assuming that those price percentage changes for both of these goods and services are the same when I'm saying that this one <clears throat> is uh, less sensitive to change in price than that one. And the reason why that's important is because if these were different percentage changes, then you can't tell which one's more elastic or less elastic. So for example, let's say that this price here went from 1,000 to 500. So notice that this price change, it went down by 50% while this one only went down by 20%. So yeah, this one was, the, the change in quantity demanded was less, but the price only went down by 20%, okay? Versus this one, the change in quantity demanded was more, but the price went down more as well. 
Okay, so both of those price changes have to be in line and, and we're going to show that once we get more technical in showing how to actually calculate the coefficient of the uh, elasticity of demand. But just wanted to make a note of that, that when I'm making both of these graphs, comparing these goods or services, I'm assuming that these percentages are the same, that percentage change is the same in price. Another thing I want to mention is that the elasticity for a single good or service can actually change throughout the demand curve. Okay, so it could be different. So when we're going to be looking at elasticity in this section, we're usually just going to be focusing on a certain region of the curve, a certain point or between two points, but it can change throughout the demand curve. So for example, let's say that, um, Let's do an example here where you're buying a sandwich every day for lunch from a place and it's seven dollars and you're buying one sandwich every day for lunch well let's say that you go in one day and there's a deal and now the sandwich is three dollars and fifty cents well are you still gonna buy that sandwich yeah you are because you're gonna buy it for seven anyway in fact, at this price, let's say that maybe you buy two sandwiches so you could have one for the next day, right? Or maybe even eat both of them at that same day, right? But the point is, is that this change, this decrease in price of 50%, you're still going to be buying the sandwich. There's still going to be demand there. Now, let's say that for that same store, for that same sandwich, you go in one day. So they've been selling it for seven this whole time. But then you go in and you see that now it's selling for 100. I know it's kind of an extreme example, but let's just work with it for now. If it's selling for $100, you were buying it at seven before, are you gonna buy the sandwich then? Probably not. Okay, so you're probably not gonna buy the sandwich for $100, you're gonna spend your money elsewhere for lunch. Now let's say you go back the next day and they actually cut this price in by uh, 50% like they did here. So now the sandwich is selling for $50. Well, are you going to buy the sandwich for $50? Probably not. It's still pretty expensive for a sandwich, especially when you were paying $7 before. So notice that the same change in price here Right? Notice it went down 50% here, it went down 50% here. Over here, the demand increased from one to two. Let's say you're going to buy two sandwiches here at 350. But over here, the demand didn't change. You're not going to buy the sandwich for either of those prices. So kind of an extreme example, but just want to make a point that for that same product, for that same good, the elasticity, that sensitivity to uh, a change in price can be different. Here, the quantity demanded went up, but over here, the quantity demanded didn't even change. It's just zero for both of these, for that same good or service. So it could depend on that uh, price point. So notice how this here would be a different area of the curve than this would be. That's one thing. But there's also other factors that can affect that elasticity. So notice that the price is one of them, the price relative to your income. But let's say that this sandwich was the only source of food around. So this is the only source of food that you have. And the price went from seven to $100. Again, an extreme example, but if it's the only source of food around, then you'll probably still be buying it for 100 because there's no other substitutes around. Okay, so there are other factors that can come in and affect that elasticity, and we'll talk about those other factors later on in the section. But yeah, I just wanted to make a point on that. So in conclusion, the more sensitive that consumers are to a price change, right, the more that quantity demanded increases, the more elastic a product is, or the less inelastic it is versus the less sensitive consumers are to price changes, like over here, than the more inelastic a product is, or the less elastic it is. Now, notice that at this point, we've kind of just kept these subjective. Like, when do we actually know when a product is elastic or when it's inelastic?
There's actual technical ways that we can figure that out. And that's what we're going to go through in the next video. We're going to show technically how do we get a certain measure and then depending on what that measure is, what category do we put certain goods and services in?